Hey guys, welcome back to Saving Green. My name is Josh. Have you ever wondered exactly what the numbers mean on all your USB adapters and wireless charging connectors or AC adapters and wanted to figure out how much energy all these devices are actually using? Well, that's the question we want to answer today. So let's get to it. So before we get into looking at individual devices, uh, I wanted to get a look at the fundamentals of electricity and electric circuits so that we can make sense of what these numbers actually mean. So for example, if we're looking at this AC adapter here, we see that it says AC 100 to 240 volts, that's at 50 or 60 hertz, and the output is DC 12 volts and 2 amps or 2A. So what does that actually mean? Well, it turns out that if you know volts and amps, you can figure out how much power in watts these devices are actually using and how much they're outputting to the devices that they're charging. And there's gonna be a difference there. There's gonna be a drop off because the 120 volt outlet that we use here in the US is gonna have its own frequency for alternating current. And then it's gonna be sent out through direct current through a lot of these charging devices and AC adapters. And that's gonna send direct electrons into your uh, batteries for your laptops and phones so they can use them, all right? So to understand the relationship between all these terms, we need to basically know what Ohm's law is all about. And Ohm's law is the formal connection between amps or current or the flow of electrons through a circuit and that's measured in coulombs per second. Coulombs is the international unit for charge, and it's a certain number of electrons, a boatload of them, six something quintillion, I don't know exactly how many it is, it doesn't really matter. All we know is that current, or amps, is the flow of electrons through a circuit. Now voltage is what's commonly found in batteries, and again, in all these AC adapters, and that basically tells you the potential energy and the potential energy is the basically amount of energy required to move an electron in a circuit. And that has to do with the interaction between different charges um, and the location of these charges in the battery or in the power supply that is being used. You could think of voltage as potential energy as if you were lifting a bucket up in the air and gravity is pulling on that bucket and even though the bucket is in the air, there's still potential energy in that bucket because water has the ability to flow even if it's not flowing yet. So you can have voltage or potential without current or without flow. Now once you hook a tube up to that system and the water starts to flow down to the ground, now you have current. And you'll notice that as the water drops down, you're gonna lose some of that voltage as well. That's why batteries over time lose a little bit of their voltage towards the end of their power cycle, okay? So you have current, you have voltage. Now current, again, is measured in amps, that's coulombs per second. Voltage is measured in joules per coulomb. Now joules is the unit of energy. And energy in physics, even in electrophysics, is related to work. Now what that actually means is it breaks down the amount of force over a certain distance. Now force in physics is measured in newtons. We all know that for an object to stay at rest, it's gonna stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion. So no forces are required to keep an object in motion and at a constant speed, or to maintain an object at rest. However, to accelerate an object, a constant force is required, and the unit of force is a newton. A newton is actually the amount of force required to move one kilogram, one meter per second per second. And you can think about this conceptually in terms of gravity. So gravity exerts 9.8 meters per second squared force on all objects on its surface. So if you had a one kilogram object that was being pulled down, you had a one kilogram times the acceleration of the Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So one kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration gives you 9.8 newtons of force on that object. Now another example, an apple weighs about one-tenth of a kilogram. So one-tenth of 9.8 is about one newton. So one newton of force is gonna be pulling an apple down towards the Earth. If it's resting on the table, there's still a force applied but no work is being done because the apple is stationary. 
So work is whether we're moving that apple over a distance. And the reason being is that you can have energy, but the energy has to be doing something. And we measure that energy in work, and that unit is joules. So we can get an understanding of current, of voltage, and now joules, this abstract concept of energy or work. But how does this relate to electrical circuits and power? Well, how much energy you're expending per second is the unit of power. In other words, a more powerful object can basically perform the same energy or the same amount of work, which is, again, force times distance in a smaller amount of time. Just like a more powerful computer has a more powerful processor, it will do all the calculations in a smaller amount of time, so therefore it's more powerful. So it makes conceptual sense. Same thing, if we think of energy in calories, if we're consuming calories and then we're expending work, we might consume the same amount of calories but burn them more quickly if we're exercising or working hard. So the concept of work or exercise is intuitive. So the relationship between watts and joules and amps and voltage is Ohm's law. And it's basically mathematically, if you take the current, which is basically charge per second, and you multiply by voltage, which is measured in the amount of work per coulomb, or the amount of work to move an electron in a charge or an electric field, the coulombs cancel out. So you get current times voltage, and you ultimately get joules per second. That's one watt. So one watt is basically one volt times one amp, okay? And it turns out that watts, both in physics and electricity, can be interchangeable because electric current generates heat. And that heat can be converted both just as heat to heat up a boiling pot of water for a steam engine, or it can be used as an electric turbine or a servo motor, or as electric light, as radiance. So basically all those things are kind of interchangeable. That's why light bulbs have a value of watts. Now for electric items in our home, if the unit of consumption, the unit of power is already in watts, it's actually fairly easy to determine how much energy or electricity those are gonna be demanding. And the reason being is that we can basically determine how many watts per hour of use and multiply those numbers together to get watt hours. And once you get thousands and thousands of watt hours, you get kilowatt hours. That's gonna be the unit of price or the unit of cost for a unit of electricity. Okay, so for our utility bills, our bill statements is gonna be measuring the amount of kilowatt hours used throughout that month. So let's look at some examples, okay? This Nest camera, okay? This Nest camera has a few items in its description. It has the power adapter input, so that's 100 to 240 volts AC. That means it can be used both domestically and internationally at 50 hertz for two amps. That means that it's drawing from the grid a voltage, right? For example, let's just use 110 because it's easy. So if we use 110 multiplied by 0.2, we're gonna get 22 watts of power that's drawn into this camera. Now for the power output from the AC adapter is five volts of direct current at 1.4 amps. So five volts at 1.4 is seven watts of power going to the camera directly. So we had 22 watts drawn from the wall. We now have seven watts going from the adapter to the camera. And now we have camera input, which is the actual amount of camera energy being used by the device itself at five volts and one amp, or five watts. So we have a drop off, little thunder. We have a drop off from input from the wall, output from the DC adapter, and then the usage from the camera itself. So let's think about this. If this camera actually requires five watts of use, what is going to be the total cost throughout the month of running this camera 24 seven? So to run this camera in one month, we would have five watts times 24 hours, which is watt hours, times 30, which is 3,600 watts, divided by 1,000, or 3.6 kilowatt hours. Okay, so to run this bad boy for a whole month, it requires 3.6 kilowatt hours. Well, that sounds pretty expensive. Well, how expensive is it? Well, we have to know the conversion rate based on our location, how much we're charged per kilowatt hour. In our case, it's about 11, maybe it's like 12 cents. 
So 3.6 times 12, 43 cents. Okay. So it takes 43 cents to run this camera 24 hours a day for a whole month. Not too bad. How much for a year? Multiply by 12. So 500 cents, so about five bucks. All right? Now, is this the way that it is? Is this true? Is this all we need to know? Well, not quite. That's why it's good to get a device like this. This is a multimeter. This will be plugged into the wall and we're gonna be able to do a little experiment to determine exactly how much power each of these items can be. So in the next video, we're gonna look at a bunch of different things throughout the home. We're gonna theoretically estimate how much power each of these items demands. And we're gonna look at small electronics as well as large ticket items, water heater, AC units, and things like that, because that's where most of our power consumption is gonna be. And we're gonna see how much is actually drawn realistically from the grid and how much we can estimate that power demand to be. Now, one thing to note, at every point that energy is transferred from AC to DC or from DC to the camera itself, as the camera is operating, you're gonna get a little bit of efficiency loss due to heat and dissipation. So you can expect about 10 to 20% of inefficiencies built in. So for our $5 per year, for our annual cost, it may be 20% or 30% more expensive than that. So maybe $6. All right. Overall, not too bad. So thanks so much for checking out Saving Green. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Thanks again. My name is Josh. We'll see you next week. Bye.